Welcome to Beyond the Lines. I'm here at Wine Connection in Sukhumvitsoi 47 at Rain Hill. And today I'll be talking to American writer Jim Newport about his latest release, Yankee Dragon, about the Hollywood industry, his career as Hollywood production designer. Let's go talk to Jim. Uh, Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. My pleasure, Keith. Yeah. Jim, when, when did you first come to Thailand? I came here in the early 80s, mm -hmm. uh, and it was mostly, uh, I think, Bangkok on that first trip, but I did get down to Pattaya, mm -hmm. and then eventually Phuket, yeah. uh, which has been my home now for full time for uh, yeah. 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since that time that I saw it for the first time, I knew that's where I wanted to, to settle in. Yeah. I'd been looking for an island. Yeah. I was looking for an escape from, uh, I was a Hollywood uh, production designer mm -hmm. for uh, quite a while and that's a hard job to uh, uh, relax from because you work intensely for four, five, six months mm -hmm. and you get three months off and what do you do with those three months, you know? So I wanted a place that I could go and do something else, you know, to yeah. unwind and in the back of my head writing was something I wanted to try yeah, okay. and I felt I needed the, the, the serenity of a place that, that I found in Phuket uh, yeah. to do that. You know. Relaxing, de-stress, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Pick, up, pick up your pen, I mean, right? You, you, you know what it was like back in those days. Yeah. I mean, there was nothing, you know. At, at yeah. night, I'd be writing with a candle, you know. Yeah, and uh, if I was lucky, some water buffaloes went by because there was no traffic. Yes, yeah, <laughs> fantastic. It was really great. <laughs> Today, everything's so built yeah, up, and yeah. you really have to it's struggle to, to find somewhere where I, it's tranquil. I go away now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I still write there, and I'm still very, very comfortable doing that and so forth. Yeah. But I also now yeah. uh, spend a couple of weeks every year a little farmhouse in, uh, in France. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, good. That sounds nice too, with, with, some, nice. with some nice wine, I, I, oh, yeah. I hope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and tell me about Vampire of Siam, because that's an interesting story. Vamp, you know, vamp, vampires and yeah. lurking streets and yeah. haunts of Bangkok. Yeah, my beloved uh, Ramon Delacroix, the yeah. Vampire of Siam. Mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to get a film made in, in, in Phuket, uh, uh, an ecological adventure, mm -hmm. and I was taking it around Hollywood to all of the low budget companies that would. I thought would do this kind of a thing, and nobody understood it. They didn't know what an ecological adventure was, yeah. but they said, we make horror films, that's our niche. Mm -hmm. If you brought us a vampire film, we could talk. Well, the vamp it, it wasn't a vampire script, it became a vampire book, yeah. and, uh, and now there's, there's four of them out, and uh, it's been a wonderful ride, and I uh, probably the next book I write will be uh, a fifth of a vampire yeah. book, which will, I know what it is because I've written a short story, mm -hmm. which is, it's the vampire in Phuket. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Same vampire. Same vampire yeah. comes to Phuket because my vampire evolved into becoming a hitman. You know, yeah. that was uh, one of the things that happened in his in his well, he's up all night in his well. career. He had to do something yeah, he, with his yeah, time. He, exactly. He <laughs> he wanted to do something. He wanted to contribute to society. <laughs> so he became a hitman, and uh, he gets a hit in Phuket. You know, oh, and he yeah. goes down to take care of this guy. You know, yeah. and uh, and the short story uh, is called Freedom, mm -hmm. and uh, it's up on my website. You guys should take a look at it because mm -hmm. it's it'll it's the lead into the next book. It's yeah, really yeah. fun. How how old would he be now? Oh, I think he was 175 when the first book came mm -hmm. out, and that's mm -hmm. now about 10, 15 years. So he's yeah. about 190. You know, yeah, yeah, he'll okay. be approaching 200 soon. He'll have a big yeah. 200 birthday celebration. Coming. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, maybe maybe that could be the launch <laughs> of, uh, of his new escapades in Phuket. Yeah. And what about um, is vampires? By nature, you you don't really they don't come up in, on film, do they? So there's no. Is there a f the photos, images? You know, uh, Keith, I deliberately stayed away from all of the vampire shtick uh, mm -hmm. in my first book. Mm -hmm. I've read everything. I read Anne Rice, I read everything I could read. But I just decided I didn't need those rules. I didn't need garlic and crosses, and, mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I just stayed away from them, and mirrors and all of that, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. I would said he's immortal, and in order to stay alive, he has to drink the blood of a, of a living being, a living human, mm -hmm. preferably. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and he has to avoid the sunlight, so he sleeps at night. And he yeah. likes to sleep in a coffin just because he's very comfortable in it. You know, he yeah. feels secure. Uh, and that was it, my, as far as my rules were. You know, yeah. um, later on in the four, in the fourth book, I needed a photograph of this guy to come about from the turn of the century, uh, which proved that he was this, he was alive for like a hundred years. And um, I needed a photograph, so I said, well, why not? He could be photographed, you know. So I've stayed away from all of the, mm -hmm. the, the other rules. Everybody seems to have a whole bunch of uh, rules. They seem to make them up themselves, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, great. Well, I look forward to seeing the next installment of Vampire of Siam. I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> great. Is there a possibility of it 
becoming a movie at some point? Well, movie rights were, were sold fairly early on mm -hmm. uh, to Millennium Pictures, and uh, Millennium has those rights. Uh, it's up to them to slot it into their calendar. Yep. Uh, I worked for them just recently here with uh, Jason Statham on uh, Mechanic right. 2, The Resurrection, mm -hmm. and yeah. the producer on the set was the producer who's been assigned to the project, and we talked yeah. quite a bit about it. Yep. You know, so who knows? Because mm -hmm. you, your essential, your, your career is a production designer. Yeah, that's what I did for uh, 40 plus years, uh, and still do, yeah. still do. Uh, that's the look of a film, basically, the production yeah, design. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, which would give you a good perspective, uh, visually, uh, for the people reading, reading your books? People who read my books, the comments are generally, uh, he writes with a, a, a filmmaker's visual sense of, of the style. Yeah. Uh, and I also like the, the, I've written scripts as well myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I like, and a script is a very short little piece of work. Mm. You know, it's got yeah. all the, the, the type is right down the middle of it. It takes you two hours to read it, just mm. like it does to watch yeah. it. And uh, books allow you, me the luxury of describing everything in the room, everything, yeah. every, every piece of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the set. You know, basically yeah, the yeah. setting. Yeah. Yeah. And you've, apart apart from in production design, you've actually appeared in a in a in well, one or more. No, I, I, yeah, occasionally what'll happen the is you're you're on a film set and they'll uh, need somebody to yeah. go uh, uh, walk through the door, so you get an extras little bit on it for just for the fun of it. Yeah, yeah, but on Cheech and Chong's uh, yeah. movie that I did called Nice Dreams, um, the uh, Tommy came to me one day after I had designed and built this magnificent marijuana nursery uh, on a tennis court. You know, it was just this incredible set. Also, it originally was a set. Oh, it was a set. It was all uh, artificial marijuana. I mean, I, my art department, I'd never seen them so dedicated to a project. Mm -hmm. Oh, they just had the best time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're looking at this Insp magnificent ins inspirational. set. Inspirational. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at this incredible set, and Tommy Chong says to me, we shoot tomorrow, Jimmy, there's something missing. And I'm thinking, God, what's missing? Is everything serious? He says, I need the genius who does this for us. We, Cheech and I couldn't do this. I need the mad scientist who runs this uh, this uh, lab, the this lab, medical yeah. lab, under the swimming pool. It was in the swimming pool. Well, that was the greatest thing. Was that Tommy yeah. said, "I want this to be covered with a canvas that's a painting of a swimming pool from the air." So when the aerial surveillance comes over looking for marijuana in the, in the jungles growing, yeah, and, yeah. And, the, and the forests and all this, <laughs> it looks like a swimming pool from Genius. the air. <laughs> Tommy said, he said, I never thought we'd be able to pull that off, yeah. but we did, and it yeah, was yeah. great. And over the years, because I'm in that scene, mm -hmm. I meet people and they go, you're the guy in the in the in the in the in the in the Cheech and Chong movie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go, dude, that was so cool. The swimming pool cover, man. I painted the top of a garage and put it over my marijuana plants up in uh, in Big Sur, yeah. and the cops never found it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a genius idea. Was yeah. I actually, I remember seeing you in that in that movie. Yeah. Well, it, a lot of people do. I still I, I don't get recognized much anymore. But the people who yeah. saw me in that movie saw yeah, me yeah. again and again in that yeah. movie because they would watch it over and over yeah, again. Yeah. Well, I heard rumor that uh, they might be going out to make a, another another movie. I, I got a script uh, just last week from uh, from them uh, yeah. for a new movie that they haven't signed off on it yet, but they mm -hmm. wanted me to take a look at it and let them know what it would involve. And I said, it's pretty big, guys, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah hopefully, they, these guys haven't done a movie together in about 15 years. Yeah, so hopefully this will be the first one when they come back. Yeah. You're very into music yourself. Uh, I am. In, in Hollywood, uh, uh, for a while there, I uh, had my own band and I would write, uh, I was a singer-songwriter, and I would perform only the material that I, that I controlled, that I wrote. It was very difficult because my musicians were working guys that would go off and then I would go off. So we would get together for three weeks and then we all had gigs and we're gone for six months and then we're back again for three weeks. I left that when I came here. Kind of hard to keep everybody together. Yeah. And, and I kind of kind of, and enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed the heck out of it. And uh, when I came here uh, for the first time, it was the first time I ever jammed. Yeah, and I yeah. think it, it was like you and guys like Dr. Blues mm -hmm. and uh, Jeff with the Soy Dogs mm -hmm. that allowed me to step on a stage and, mm -hmm. and do Blues and G. Yeah. And I found out that it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And I found out that there was this core of incredible musicians yeah. in, uh, in Bangkok. You yeah, know? Yeah. And also now in Phuket. Well, you know? There is. It, the scene, since, since I've been here, the scenes, the scenes in Rome, oh, um, local Thai blues bands. Oh. And today, are, yeah. you know, they're fantastic and they're playing it. Yeah. Incredibly, yeah. There's, there's some real talent, and um, of course the the foreign guys that have been playing around for a while are still still you know playing around. So yeah. it's, it's great, yeah. very cool. No, I tell people all over the world. I said, listen, if you want to have a, a good night out and hear some good blues and some good music, go to Bangkok. Jim, I'm 
brought an instrument, I brought my melodeon, and uh, maybe you'd give us a couple of bars of blues. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. There is nothing I could do If you leave me here to cry There is nothing I could do If you leave me here to cry You know my love will follow you Until the day I die Till the day I die Yeah. Jim Newport, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jimmy Fame. Jimmy Fame? No. On stage? Jimmy <laughs> Fame. Jim. Tell me about Yankee Dragon. This is your latest book release, isn't it? Yeah, this one here. I'm, I'm very, very proud of this. This just mm -hmm. came out. This is literally available now on Amazon in all formats. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be an audio book out uh, shortly as well, which is for me a treat, because that's the first one of my books that's okay. out in audio form as yeah, well. Yeah. But this book was something that I thought was lost. I wrote this book 25 years ago uh, mm -hmm. when I was working on a project in Japan. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, I never published it. I never uh, got it uh, out to uh, anybody other than uh, a few people saw it, liked it. But mm -hmm. I was basically becoming a Bangkok writer, a Thai writer, mm -hmm. and uh, and this was my deals were, were with Asia Books, and Asia Books didn't know how to how to market a book that was set in Japan at yeah. that time. Yeah. So I, I I put it away. Well, frankly, I lost it, you know, because <laughs> it was written on an old computer that no longer exists yep. and the formats don't exist and all that stuff. Yep. I went to Japan this spring just for a trip to take my wife to, to look <laughs> around Japan. <laughs> I looked up an old friend and she and I, I know, had shared this experience and I had given her a copy of it. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you any chance have a copy of this? And she did. Oh, fantastic. Like, oh, my God. So we got it scanned, mm -hmm. and I got it back in my hands, and I went through it, and I reformatted it for contemporary uh, uh, market, et cetera, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I sold it to this uh, company, uh, California Times Publishing, as mm -hmm. the first book mm -hmm. deal that I have with them. Mm -hmm. So I I'm very, very happy so, that it's out. It's something uh, that was a, uh, I thought back was... from the abyss. It was, it was lost. It was lost. It's a lost book. Wow, yeah. fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And it's a lot of fun because it's it's in the same theme as Tinseltown, mm -hmm. which is a standalone book, basically. Uh, it's Tinseltown and Chasing Jimmy are not, the, obviously, the vampire books. Yeah. So those are standalone books, and Tinseltown is a Hollywood novel, yeah. and I, I like to to write Hollywood novels. This is, yes. this is another Hollywood novel, even yeah. though it's about making a movie in Japan. Mm -hmm. It's the experience of Hollywood filmmakers dealing with Japan yeah. and all of those there was a lot going culture, on. culture clashes. There was a lot going on in Japan at that time when it, yeah. American Hollywood companies or movies were Nin actually 1995, producing there were, 1995, there were two big incidents there happening on, on the different continents. And mm -hmm. happening in Los Angeles was the writer's strike that crippled the industry for two or three years. A lot of people, myself included, yeah. found themselves out of work for two years. And a lot of people left the business. And it was very, very oh, rough. Yeah. In Japan, if you uh, were, were in Japan, you were, you were now in an economy that was the bubble boom was going mm -hmm. on. I mean, Japan Inc. was, the, you know, this much footage uh, where we are, Keith, would be a million dollars, you know, oh, right here and we're surrounded really, by our couches and really. chairs. Yeah, if you were in Tokyo. A year. And, well, a, a million dollars to buy it, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, just that, you know. Yeah. So we, uh, if you were making films, Black Rain was, was being made over there yes, before so, we yeah. got there. And uh, it was an incredibly frustrating experience mm -hmm. because the costs were astronomical yeah. and the, uh, the dealing with the, uh, the, the culture, the ancient culture, was so mm -hmm. hard for Hollywood. What to year was this? This, is this was 95, 96, 90, in, that, in that area, yeah. early early 90s. Yeah. It kept on going until about 97. I think the bust was around 97, yeah. around the, the same time. As the the Asian crisis yeah, around yeah. 97. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I was on a film project over there that was uh, facing these same problems. Everything, the costs were running out of control. Mm -hmm. uh, people didn't know how to deal with the, the Japanese counterparts that they mm -hmm. were working with. and. Uh, and I was just fascinated at the stuff that was going on around oh, yeah. me. So yeah. I started to keep a journal, and the journal turned into a book, turned into a yeah, fictional book. Yeah, so there's a lot of, a a lot of history in, 
Yeah. Just, it's a great title, Yankee Dragon. It's, Yankee it's, Dragon. It says yeah. it all. Well, Yankee Dragon uh, was uh, was actually one of the names we came up for the movie at the time because the, the movie was about a baseball player that gets uh, sent over to Japan, uh, an American baseball player. Mm -hmm. So he's a Yankee Dragon. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so. But that wasn't the title of the movie. The movie was actually Mr. Baseball. Ah, with Tom Selleck. Oh, yeah, with Tom Selleck. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that, was, that was the film, that was the real film that I was working on. Yeah. A, a, a rotten day in paradise. I, I love Tinsel the, Town, another rotten day in paradise. It's fantastic, yeah. fantastic. I like the way you you connect music and and Hollywood, and you, mm. because you were there, you mm. were you were behind, and, and it's really behind the scenes. So there's yeah. a lot of history, but a lot of um, truth. Yeah being told yeah. Yeah. In, in your books. Yeah. Well, one of the things I talk about in, uh, in Tinseltown is that my career started in the 70s in, mm -hmm. uh, in Hollywood, and that was the Roger Corman days. You know, the, the first low-budget movies were breaking mm -hmm. the barriers of the studio control yeah, pictures. Yeah. So kids like us were able to make movies, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and get a lot of experience doing mm -hmm. it. But those 30 years or so uh, of the, the films that I worked on, uh, were incredible because things really happened mm -hmm. in front of you, in front of the camera, in front of us. All yeah. special effects, visual effects. Mm -hmm. There were no visual effects. It was yeah. all special effects. And uh, these were yeah. these were things that happened right in front of the camera. If the camera didn't film it, it didn't happen. Oh, yeah, you know. Okay. So we had the exposure to There's the no most CGI amazing. Or, there was no CGI. Yeah, yeah. So we we were exposed to the most amazing stunts, effects, and mm -hmm. things like that. We would go to incredible locations, mm -hmm. you know, because you yeah. had to, yeah. you know. Uh, I, I think it was just so much more fun, you yeah. know. I mean, I work on big movies today. I worked on mm -hmm. Mechanic 2, The Resurrection, That's recently right. here. And 60% of that movie is a giant green screen, you know, yeah. wrapping around a stage set. Now, yeah. we still do the stage set. We yeah. still design what's on that green screen, mm -hmm. but we're not physically present, you know, yeah. in that world anymore, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. it's, a, it's a shame. And I, I think these young guys here who are working for you uh, are missing out on something that was, they would have really enjoyed. Jim, what's your advice for uh, new writers trying to release a book, getting a publishing deal? Well, the, the, the first thing that people always ask me is, how do you do it? How do you, how do you write a book? I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I've got an idea and I want to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I say, you see this? And you see this? Make sure you always have a little notebook and a pen with you because you never know when that idea is going to come and you want to put it down. And then when you're yeah. ready to sit in front of the, the computer, yeah. uh, you've got your notes. You know, keep a file and throw every thought about a book that's percolating in your brain into it. Yeah. When you're ready, you don't have to have the book plotted yeah. out. Yeah. None of my books that I've written here, when I sat down to write them, did I know how they would, how they would end? I didn't know how they would end. Yeah. You know, I knew who the characters were. I yeah. knew what the setting was. And, I, and I knew how it started out and what the point of the book was, you mm -hmm. know. But I didn't know the trip it was going to go on. Yeah. And, that, and for me, that's the most fun. Because yeah. you're really learning the story mm -hmm. as you write it, you know. And yeah. it's like, and you wake up in the middle of the it's night. It's evolving as, as you write it. Yeah, and you wake up in the middle of the night with these crazy ideas. Or you write stuff that you don't remember yeah. uh, because maybe you consumed something while you were writing it, you know. Because I do a lot of writing in France. It's quite must, possible. And I must admit, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of, well, in France, when I go over there every mm -hmm. year, I, I spend about two weeks of doing serious writing. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of wine that's consumed in that mm -hmm. point in time, you know. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes look at the pages the next day and I go, where did that come from? You know, it's like, wow. You know, <laughs> then I realized, oh yeah, that church bell was ringing outside that cafe. And suddenly that church bell ringing outside that cafe is now in my, my story. Oh, for fantastic. A reason, you know, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Just yeah, you yeah. go, how did I ever think of that? Oh yeah, that's what happened. You know. yeah. So it's just enjoy the fun of writing a book. Make sure you, once you start it, that you continue to, to religiously write. You know, don't mm. stop, don't give up. You yeah. know, you've got to just write every day and you've got to get the damn thing done. Yeah. You know? And reading other authors that might inspire you. Reading right? authors so that inspire you is, is always uh, terrific. That's what I do all the time. You know, mm -hmm. I, uh, I now carry a Kindle loaded with all my favorite authors. Yeah. And I'm Who all, would be one of your favorite reading. authors? Well, right now, it's, uh, it's a guy by the name of Richard Stark, who is mm -hmm. actually a synonym for the uh, writer Donald Westlake. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote a whole series of pulp uh, books called, uh, about a character called Parker. Mm -hmm. And there's about 28 of them. I'm up to about book number 26 Whoa, right okay. now. And they're just the most fun. You know, mm -hmm. and there was a movie made recently where uh, Jason Statham played Parker with oh, yes. uh, with Jessica uh, with uh, J Lo with, with mm -hmm. Jennifer Lopez. Okay. Uh, so that may lead to a, a more of those movies, mm -hmm. which would be kind of fun. I also read uh, Lee Childs, uh, the the Reacher books. You know, uh, I read Michael Connelly, who's mm -hmm. uh, who writes Hollywood uh, homicide stories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I read uh, James Lee Burke 
and uh, and I read James Elroy. These are the guys that I read. I like about. James Elroy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very James nice. Elroy. I met him, okay. and I met him when I was uh, uh, about to start chasing Jimmy. Yeah. And I went to a book signing of uh, of uh, James Elroy's because James Elroy writes mm. about a fictional Los Angeles in mm. which. Uh, Frank Sinatra is in the is in the Casa Nostra. He's in the mafia, and he takes a baseball bat to Sammy yeah. Davis Jr. and stuff like that. Right yeah. now, it's not could true. Be it could, can't, be, it could be true, but it's nobody's ever really got that on paper, right? Mm. Except he he writes it in his books. And I so I met him. I stood in line at a book signing, and I said uh, I said uh, James Elroy. I'm, I'm Jim Newport. It'll lead to a better story in a second. Mm. And I said, how do you get away with what you t you do about these real characters? Yeah. He goes, well, number one, they're public figures. Number two, they're dead. So have at them, right? Mm -hmm. I said, wow, I've just been given the blessing to write about Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, right? basically. But then he saw my book, because I had the vampire with me, right? And he mm. said, Jim Newport, I went to a great Halloween party at your house, you know? And I, then I was like, he, they started talking about all the people he met at my Halloween party, oh. James Woods and uh, uh, LA Mike parties Wallace. were notorious. Oh, yeah, they were absolutely, my, my Halloween you parties know. were incredible, which was, but it's a, it's a story point in, in Tinseltown. Because we still some Nash stories from Hollywood parties and the Grateful yeah. Dead and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but Halloween parties, the Hollywood Halloween parties that I threw mm. were legendary. You know? <laughs> and he had been to one and that's what he remembered. He never, he never forgot the name, yeah. Jim Newport. You know? Yeah, well, ha hallo Halloween parties, there's definitely a connection between that and the uh, vampires of Siam. Yeah, well, we've done some Halloween stuff here in Bangkok. We did a yeah. Halloween tour of the Vampire of Siam uh, uh, actual sites yeah. one year. We had a big bus that went around. It was great fun. Jim, you've been nominated for an Emmy in the past. Any other awards you've achieved recently? Uh, well, the, the Emmy, I was very, very proud of that. There was a mm -hmm. nomination for a Hallmark Hall of Fame uh, called yeah. The Piano Lesson. And mm -hmm. uh, that, was, that was great. And I lost it to the guy who started me out in the business, a production uh -huh. designer named Roger Moss. Uh -huh. And I thought, well, if I'm going to lose it to anybody, I'll lose it to him. Because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. was great. Oh, uh, then uh, two years ago, here in Thailand, at the Thailand Destination Film Festival, they gave me a special award, which was really mm -hmm. cool, which was for my contributions to uh, Thai cinema. You know, and I think that's because I've been making movies here in one way or another for almost 20 years. You yeah. know? And uh, a lot of times I kind of get people's ear in Hollywood and say, you should shoot that in Thailand, shoot that in Thailand. And yeah, yeah. they do. So I think that's what they were uh, yeah. responding to. So a lot of contribution to the Thai film industry. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It's, it's, been, it's been great. Yeah. Well, which is nice. It's the country we live in. Um, Jim, um, I know you're involved in a charity. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, after the tsunami, uh, when I was in Phuket mm -hmm. and so forth, uh, I went out and, and, and raised some money and brought some money back uh, uh, to help out in the community and stuff. But I was so impressed by one group, and that was the Rotary Club of, mm -hmm. of Baton, that I've now become not a member yet, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fringe guy who goes Honorary to... Honorary member. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they're looking for me to sign up, but I keep find excuses, but I go to as many meetings as I can, and I, I contribute to all of the events that they do. We've done a lot of book uh, uh, kind of signings and stuff where all mm. of the money goes to their really good charities, and they work mm. with a lot of kids, you know, yeah. underprivileged kids in Phuket. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's their Very good terrific cause. bunch of guys. Yeah. yeah, great cause. Thank you for being on the show. And oh, it's been a pleasure, Yeah, yeah. thank you. Would you uh, sing us out? Blues and G. Blues and G, yeah, I got one of those.
Kim Newport, ladies and gentlemen. Jimmy Fame. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. Thank you, buddy. Great to see you. Good to see you. Yeah.